So, good morning, everyone, and uh, good afternoon for people from China. Uh, as well, I, 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 re I really appreciate that, that, that our partner in this, in this uh, project uh, join, join our the meeting, especially partner from Virginia, especially partner from, uh, uh, from um, UK. And uh, so today you, we will have two uh, single technical talks uh, uh, delivered by, by my students, uh, Stini. So Stini is based at Tyndall uh, Institute and uh, she is the CIT PhD student. And Vinay, Vinay is based at the uh, Chagas Moor Park Milk uh, Institute, but he's also the uh, CIT uh, PhD student. So probably you, you, you've seen this um, uh, abstract. Uh, I'll, I'll, I want to uh, show you uh, the story because it's a bit complicated. The every, everything uh, started when the Professor Haitao Ye contacted me from uh, Aston University. At the moment, he is University of uh, Leicester, and he proposed if we can work together on the nine, nan, diamond based uh, nanomaterials, nanostructures. Uh, so then uh, we applied for the uh, Maria Skłodowska Curie Action Rise. A project which is related uh, only to the staff uh, exchange, so we have possibility to visit uh, each other. And uh, according to the European Commission uh, officers, this is very unique uh, project uh, because uh, it consists of three different continents. But while uh, the different rice projects are mainly uh, uh, related to the to the European uh, countries. So, what are what 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 are what are the people involved in this? Uh, University of uh, Leicester, that's Professor Haitao Ye, University of Birmingham, that's Zhang Zhang, and ourselves, that uh, I'm a PI of this of this uh, project here. Uh, there's a company from uh, from uh, UK, which is at that moment of the application, it, 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 it was part of me, but the, the big uh, international consortium. But uh, right, right now, they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are back to the original name and they are called tear coatings. And they are, they are making uh, different type of, of uh, coatings and uh, nano, nano layers. Uh, two uh, universities from, uh, from, from Beijing. So the one is University of Science and Technology uh, Beijing, when we have collaboration with uh, Professor Chen Ming Li and Jun Jun Wei. So I think Jun Jun is, is with us at, 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 at the moment, so we can have discussion with them uh, afterwards. And Zhejiang University of uh, Technology with the Professor Xia Yong Hu. Uh, and uh, also we have partner, that's the startup company uh, based in the uh, Institute of Nanotechnology and uh, Nanoscience uh, in uh, Barcelona, Spain, and we have also partner from from uh, US, which is Oak Ridge National uh, Laboratory. And I think I, I, it's it's quite important to stress the Oak Ridge at the moment because both of my students, Sini and Vinay, got the uh, uh, successful proposal to the access of the Oak Ridge uh, facilities uh, at, at the moment. I think Sini will and Vinay will, will, will say a few words uh, about uh, this idea because uh, on the top of that we have money to, 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 to travel to the to, to, to US, you, every time you need to apply for the specific access to the uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory because of the uh, of the rules of the uh, of this uh, facility and and both Sini and Vinay are uh, successful uh, at the moment with the with the application. Uh, the other question is when are they going to go there? But okay, I will I will keep it uh, open. So the 
initial outcome of the of the of the uh, this spa uh, rice project was the optical characterization of the natural diamonds. So you can you can see the image uh, here, four natural uh, gemstones uh, shining under UV uh, excitation. So we did a bit of time resource spectroscopy, but also uh, at this stage, uh, I've been contacted by Mark Oche from Chagask uh, Moore Park uh, Institute. Uh, and uh, he asked if we are interested in bringing photonics to the dairy uh, industry. And then I show him this, this results. Uh, and I propose we might, we might bring the nano diamonds to make the milk powders optically uh, active. And he was very enthusiastic uh, 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 seeing this because uh, they, they were trying to use different dyes or colloidal mm, dots, quantum dots, but they were quite afraid about uh, chemical instability and poisonous of all these components. So when I propose that nano diamonds as a very, very, very uh, chemically stable material to add to, 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 to his uh, Produ production line of the of the of the milk uh, protein powders. Uh, he was he was very enthusiastic. So uh, we did apply uh, to the department of uh, agricultural food and uh, marine, and, and we succeed in in uh, uh, this proposal. So uh, that's what the story uh, today will be about. So there are five uh, partners uh, in this uh, project. So uh, Chagask, the Moore Park uh, is, uh, is uh, PI or is guiding uh, the project. So originally it was Mark uh, Oti, but uh, he, he, he moved to, 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 to UK because he, he got the, the different uh, position. So at the moment, the uh, Chagas PI is Sean uh, Hogan. Uh, we have partners and the, 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 the Chagas, Chagas partners, they, they uh, are mainly uh, involved in the producing powders and also morphology uh, studies. So Vinay will, will say a few words uh, about uh, this. We have uh, partners from uh, UCC. So uh, Simus O'Mahony uh, is PI of this part. So our role in the project is, as I said, being uh, bringing photonics uh, or photonic sensor or nano diamonds into into mm, into the mm, uh, milk uh, or dairy, dairy dairy powder. So Cini will will tell about uh, uh, this uh, here. And then we also have Ulster University. I'm very grateful uh, that, that, that they are joining this, uh, this seminar uh, today. Uh, and they are mainly working on the uh, imaging or 3D imaging or very sophisticated confocal microscopy uh, here. And uh, the, 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 the last partner is from the Waterford Institute of Technology. So they are specializing in the uh, 3D microimaging using X-ray um, tomography. Uh, I think I, I I I should stop at the one. So I can I can say the the the, the other outcome of this project there are two successful uh, proposal to the access to the Oak Ridge, and we also have two uh, successful. Uh, Proposal under under uh, H2020 uh, scheme to uh, access Surrey University uh, facilities for the uh, ion uh, implantation. So maybe at the at the very end of my short uh, story, I'll show you uh, what was the first outcome of implementing nano diamonds to the dairy products. So what we have here, we have 
uh, 3D confocal microscopy uh, images. I will, I will show the movie now. So we are scanning about the, uh, around the, the Z axis. And um, here maybe the next movie is, is, and what you see, there's combination of the white light image and fluorescence uh, image. So uh, in general, milk powders are not very optically uh, active, but when we add during the drying process, the nano diamonds powder into the, uh, into the milk concentrate, what you can see, you can see the reddish luminescence going from the nano diamonds. So you can you can make that 3D uh, scans of the uh, yeah, show the other one 3D scans uh, of the of the of the milk uh, powders, which is combination of the white light image of the of the powder oh and luminescence. Uh, apologies, we cannot we cannot see the video. Uh, we could just oh, see the pop up pop-up um, notification, uh, would you like to open the file, but we can't really see the video or whatever you're showing at the moment. Okay. Maybe you're just sharing the, the slides, so that's why. If you share the screen, then we could we could also see both, or you should change from one window to the other window. Okay, sorry. Uh, so what should I do? Yeah, maybe if you played it from there, I think. It, it, yeah, it's not playing. Mm. What you have to do is find it and share it as your screen. So come out of this screen and go into another one. Or maybe do that at the okay, very end. I need to, okay, stop sharing and um, share the screen. Um, Thomas, uh, without doing the slideshow, I think you can run it from there straight away. Yeah. Okay. Might it be an idea, Thomas, to do this at the very end after the two? I think your two students have talked. Oh, probably yes. Probably yeah. 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 I'll, 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 I'll check how to how to do it. Okay. So at the moment, uh, I think uh, I'm giving the floor to the to the Cine, uh, and and uh, Vinay. Uh, I, I hope I, I clarify the, the, the way of the collaboration and uh, how, how the multidisciplinary the project uh, of the both projects uh, uh, are seen. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, so, good morning to all. Uh, my name is Sini. I'm a PhD student working uh, with Dr. Tomok Jayhowski. And here I'm going to, uh, as Tomok said, I'm going to describe about the uh, surface chemistry studies of high protein milk powders using the optical spectroscopy technique. So, the main techniques, whatever we are using here, is uh, FTA, IR, ATR spectroscopy and the Raman spectroscopy. So Fourier transform infrared attenuated total reflectance spectroscopy and uh, Raman spectroscopy. Uh, can you hear? Actually, I'm not, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can audible. hear you. Yeah. Yes, very okay. clear. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, so I will start from the uh, milk protein and the importance of their market and the research currently going on. So according to this uh, uh, market research, we can say that in 2018, the milk protein uh, powders uh, funding was about 850 million. And they are predicting by 2025, it will be 1.3 billion. So it is a very huge increase because of the high consumption in different fields, even in the industry, even, you know, even uh, the people uh, go to the gym, they will use the different nutrition products and protein supplements and infant formulas. So the global increase in the consumption is actually making the demand in the global market. So in this case, actually, it's very important to know how these milk powders are beneficial, how, how can we make it uh, very easily usable for the consumers. So that's why uh, the rehydration is coming into the picture because 
to regain the properties, the functionalities of uh, milk powders, we have to uh, uh, mix, mix it with water. So it's fine if you're eating milk powders because it's just like me, but, uh, but if you are uh, in, if it is in an industry or if it is uh, some other, uh, even in case of uh, protein supplements and all, you can actually, you have to mix it with water and it is not a very easy process. So that process is actually known as rehydration. So, yeah. We and um, the rehydration process as, um, is one of the crucial step to gain the functional properties uh, of uh, high protein milk powders. And every step, uh, so rehydration is, uh, is multiple steps, like um, they have to be vetted first, they'll swell, there will be sinking and dispersion, and each of the steps can be rate limiting uh, while we are reconstituting these milk powders with water. So um, I'll talk in a little bit detail in uh, my, my slides. Yeah, as, so as uh, Vinay said, this uh, rehydration should be considered the first and most essential attribute of high protein dairy powders because they, they, they use it as the ingredients in the food industry and other dairy dry products and everything. So it is for the industry people, they need very easily flow, flowing and easily soluble milk powders and high protein milk powders. So measuring the rehydration properties using optical spectroscopy method. That's what we are going to do and how this uh, composition of milk powders and uh, the functional properties of milk powders are affecting the rehydration process. So that is why this uh, Fourier transform, uh, transform infrared attenuator total reflectance spectroscopy uh, we are using. And it's a very simple technique uh, be because the main uh, platform for this uh, detection spectroscopy is actually a crystal with a high refractory index. So we will be using a infrared light uh, uh, using passing through the uh, crystal and it will we will instant this particular IR light wave in a particular angle to make it to totally inter total internal reflection to happen uh, total internal reflection inside the crystal. So when it passes through the crystal, it will uh, there, the it will uh, come in contact with the samples which is on top of the crystal so big uh, and a fraction of this light wave will absorb by the sample and again it will go back to the crystal and then at the end it will after multiple total internal reflection it will go back to the detector so basically we are looking into the absorption or the uh, reflectance from the uh, uh, sample or from the crystal so you can by differentiating this uh, analyzing this spectra we can clearly understand the molecular vibrations happen or what is the difference in the uh, what is the absorption and molecular vibration informations from the sample so here we are using diamond crystal as the uh, platform eight year uh, crystal platform because uh, this diamond is very strong and it is a inactive material and also it has a very high spectral window. So we can use it for any material and there won't be any destruction from the uh, di diamond. So we fabricated this single crystalline diamond eight year from uh, with the help of uh, University of Science and Technology China as part of H2020 project as uh, Tomek said. So one of our colleague, uh, Dr. Danny Saladuka has actually spent uh, and I spent there for one or two months and we made this single crystalline diamond. And for the port to make the portable device, uh, portable eight year spectroscopy device. So this is another uh, uh, setup for the flow cell eight year spectroscopy using the zinc selenide eight year crystal. So you can see clearly the picture is showing how is this uh, total internal reflection happening. And we will be keeping in this picture there is an inlet and outlet. So the mill protein suspension will go pass through this uh, one end and the zinc selenide ATR crystal uh, will be placing in between this uh, micro, this flow cell. So the proteins, whatever passing through this uh, crystal and it will go back to the detector and that's how we will be uh, detecting the uh, 
IR spectra and analyzing how is this uh, molecular vibrational uh, information center. And the second technique what we are using is the confocal Raman spectroscopy. Uh, basically, the Raman spectroscopy is a vibrational spectroscopy, but here we are looking into the, instead of looking into the abs absorption of reflectance from the uh, sample, here we are looking into the scattering from the sample. So uh, maybe, uh, yeah, it is actually one by millionth of scattering is only the Raman scattering. And the majority of the scattering is known as Rayleigh scattering. So this Raman scattering is very, very, very uh, uh, minor. So it's very less number. So it's very difficult to uh, uh, get it. So we need a particular setup for that. And also uh, we need very, uh, we have to uh, maintain particular wavelengths and detectors for this particular uh, setup. And uh, next, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, some case studies using the FDR and uh, Raman spectroscopy. So just want to show how is the, we are analyzing this um, uh, spectra and how we are going to uh, interpret how is these peaks are contributing to the rehydration of milk powders and all. So as you can see, this is actually a reference spectra. That means reference spectra of uh, water. And this is the skimmed milk protein and milk protein concentrate. The red one is showing the milk protein concentrate. So the spectra around from 1000 to 2000 region is actually a fingerprint region of uh, milk proteins because uh, it is showing very, uh, uh, the, the peaks around 1400 to 1600 or 700 is from the amide, uh, amide one, amide two, amide three, uh, region. So basically it is talking about the casein proteins because casein is the one of the main ingredient in the milk protein. And the next uh, uh, graph is showing about uh, different milk protein concentrate with the different protein concentration. So when I'm saying MPC 80 means the 80 percentage of it is actually the protein concentration and the 20 will be the remaining other uh, kind of uh, lactose and other ashes and moisture, that kind of contents. So MPC 70, so there are um, five samples, MPC 80, 70, 60, and 50, and 35. So you can see that for the higher protein content, there is a higher absorption in the amide region or higher uh, the uh, casein protein region. So that's how we can uh, interpret. Okay, this is a sample with the higher casein uh, concentration. And then after that, we added water into it just to check how is it is um, how it is changing the uh, casing structures. So you can see this black one, a black uh, spectra is showing the powder form, and the yellow uh, 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 spectra is showing the milk protein with water. So as it is getting diluted, the absorption from the because basically the casing uh, proteins will get. Uh, dissolve in the water and it will get disintegrate. So dissolution will happen. So normally the absorption from, because basically it is uh, disintegrating the casein structure. So in that case, actually the absorption from this samples will be less. So we can consider that's how the dilution process is. As the dilution increases, as the time lapses, there will be a, a very, very good difference in the, um, very evident difference in the FTR spectra. So in, in case of uh, Raman uh, spectra, it is actually a complementary technique to vibrate uh, FTR spectra because uh, some samples are Raman active. So we can see some peaks in the Raman spectra and some uh, other complementary peaks in the uh, uh, IR spectra. So that's how we, we are coming into a conclusion. They, these peaks are from because of this particular product or this particular component in the, material, in the sample. So that's how I'm showing like uh, this Raman spectra of lactose and MPC 80 control. So this is actually MPC milk protein concentrate 80. That means 80 percentage of casein powders. So the lactose is actually, the lactose peak is in the background. So it is very evident from this um, uh, graph that the peaks around 1446 the th uh, and the peaks around 1640 and 50 
is from only from the milk proteins you can see it it is not because of the lactose so it is mainly because of the casein products or casein um, uh, uh, the presence of casein is showing this uh, graph and uh, this is actually one of the uh, paper we are uh, going to publish soon with in, in collaboration with the UCC. Um, so according to their uh, studies, they did some um, chemical method, some, they said some acidity uh, changes in the uh, milk proteins. So you can see there is a different pH level for the milk proteins. So pH 6.9, 7.3, 7.6. And the last sample is pH 6.9 R. That means restored milk proteins. That means it ha at the beginning, it has actually pH about 7.6. Then again, it came back to, they did some, they added some NaOH and chemical reactions. And after that, they came to the 6.9. So according to their rehydration experiments, the pH 6.9 restored is showing very good, higher, high, very easy, um, very fast dispersibility and solubility than other samples. So we were also expecting, even in case of Raman spectra, we can see something, some difference in the amide or casein structures, because so there is some, uh, because there is a very evident rehydration property differences. So it, it is necessary, it is, uh, it should be seen in the Raman spectra also. But it is all reversed to our, like it was actually completely uh, reversed to our expectations because uh, the Rama spectra in the 1200 to 1800 region is showing there is no any evident differences in the casing structures or any uh, casing uh, secondary structures in the casing proteins. So the uh, whatever the methods you, you they used for the uh, treating the pH uh, to change the pH of the milk powders, it, it doesn't actually change the casing structure or the milk proteins. But at the same time, they improved the rehydration property also. So it was a very uh, important, very uh, uh, valuable information for those people. And uh, we are trying to publish this paper soon with those people. So this is all about my uh, analysis or my studies about uh, how is this uh, Raman spectroscopy and FTR spectroscopy we used for uh, milk proteins and milk protein rehydration process to understand the rehydration process. So I can pass it to Mine. You can he can explain more about the studies. Thank you. Thank you, Sunny. Okay. So um, again, good morning and good afternoon, um, everyone. Uh, is my screen uh, visible, Sunny? Yes, yes, it is. Okay. Um, thank you so much for joining um, uh, the presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, Andre sir and Sean sir, they are principal uh, scientists from Chagisk. Thank you so much for joining. Um, so as as uh, Thomas and Sini explained a little bit about uh, the project and uh, what we are doing. I'm a PhD student um, based in Chagisk and I'm working on developing different atomic force microscopy techniques to characterize um, the microstructure of high protein spray dried powders. Um, in my presentation, I'll give a brief introduction about um, where these high protein milk powders are used, what exactly the issue is with high protein milk powders, and I will also talk about the characterization technique I used for uh, studying the microstructure of these high protein spray dried powders, and also uh, show some of my results. Um, uh, till now. So high protein spray dried milk powders are um, everywhere these days. So you probably might have seen uh, some of the products uh, on the screen. Um, they are available for global uh, sports nutrition. Uh, they are available as uh, supplements, high protein dry diets, as chocolates, biscuits. And this is the range of high protein products from uh, a company uh, which is named Glanbia, you might uh, might know the name. It's an uh, Ireland-based company. And they all have to use uh, high-protein milk powders, also some other sources, but basically high-protein milk powders to make the uh, products for the end users and also as an ingredient to make uh, different products. Now, uh, what's uh, why do we use them? 
they have different functional properties because of their functional properties such as apart from nutritional value uh, as proteins they have essential amino acids all 20 of them which is required for uh, human development human growth body growth and apart from that they are also used in the field of uh, bakery emulsifiers uh, um, in in the field of bakery different beverages for example uh, used by the gym people uh, they uh, provide good solubility uh, they give good emulsification properties what do i mean by that is they provide uh, an interface between the fat uh, phase the fat of uh, fat component and the water component and they bring them together in the final product apart from that they also are used for flavor enhancement colors their gelling property uh, for example uh, and they provide good mouth feel they have good water binding capacity and also uh, provide ultimately the texture and the microstructure of the food we eat in our daily life now um, apart from that to achieve these functional properties these uh, high protein milk powders has to go through a, a rehydration process to get their native chemical form uh, to get that we have to do the rehydration that means in simple terms mixing these high protein milk powders with water now we are restricted in that area because it's very hard process it's very hard uh, to mix these high protein milk powders to with water and because of the restriction we are not getting completely the functional properties of uh, you know the main reason we started using them we are not getting the function properties completely now as a solution to this uh, kind of i would say uh, temporary but for long time people are using uh, you know different shaker bottles they come with uh, these protein supplements and they have to uh, shake the bottle for a couple of minutes and then they are, they they'll get their beverage now apart from that if you have to think at an industrial level um, there are different companies for example gia they have to make uh, uh, an instrument which will have you know high shear forces to uh, mix these powders and this is energy intensive process as you can imagine now uh, right now in the video uh, which you're looking at uh, they are going to inject very little amount of powder but believe me it's couple of hundred kgs uh for for their batches it's very energy intensive process plus it's time taking now uh in the daily dry project we are trying to solve this problem we are trying to uh develop uh you know different uh you know uh, next generation high protein spray dried milk powders with enhanced rehydration properties so as you can see um in in the video it's it's quite time taking and energy intensive process now uh, moving on to the bulk uh, you know property of rehydration how i uh, see this issue is we can go straight away to the root problem and then uh, see uh, what the issue is at single particle level and then we'll come back to the bulk uh, you know bulk property of of these powders now the characterization technique um, i as i said i'm using atomic force microscopy technique AFM, uh, the basic three uh, imaging modes, imaging methods available out there is either by non-contact mode where the cantilever. So AFM, uh, I am sure uh, everyone knows about it. I'll give a brief introduction. AFM is a scanning probe uh, a microscopy technique. It, will ha it, it has a very sharp cantilever uh, tip which will uh, touch the surface either uh, in three ways either it will be completely in non-contact mode mode it will be either tapping on the surface or completely touching the surface and giving the topographical information of your sample now you can imagine if it is touching the surface it's gouging the surface it's destructive in nature while non-contact mode doesn't possess enough uh, energy to overcome the sticking of the cantilever if the um, the surface is gooey or it will stick to the surface that's we don't want now there is a third uh, method which is kind of amalgamation of the two non-contact and contact mode where the cantilever is going to oscillate at its resonant frequency or near its resonant frequency and it will come in and out of contact of the sample it will touch the sample and give its uh, topographical information and we are going to it's an amplitude modulation method so uh, the cantilever uh, is set to 
a, a, a reference amplitude and uh, the feedback uh, control loop will uh, make make sure that uh, it it comes back to its uh, set point and uh, the movement away or the deflection away from the set point will give, give us information about the topography now talking some of the results uh, of my previous studies so how i started uh, studying single powder particle is uh, i started with three commercially produced high protein milk powders uh, they are named uh, skimmed milk powder milk protein concentrate and whey protein isolate now uh, the milk protein concentrate and um, skin milk powder they all have different protein concentrations smp around 50 to 55% of protein milk protein concentrate basically has higher casein content in it uh, i'll just quickly mention that milk has two major uh, proteins in it uh, named casein and whey protein so milk protein concentrate has higher casein content in it very less lactose which is milk sugar very less lactose content and whey protein isolate with the development of uh, membrane filtration um, filtration technology and ultra filtration technology this byproduct uh, we start the dairy industry started to utilize this and now we have a, a different powder with whey protein content in it previously it was wasted uh, in the dairy industry but this aggravated the issue as the protein content increases the rehydration problem also uh, kind of uh, deteriorates or uh, aggravates um, with with the you know uh, the filtration process so i started with three commercially produced skim milk powders i placed them for 3 weeks at 22 degrees celsius at nine different relative humidities ranging from 0 to 85 and you can uh, calculate that i ended up having uh, 27 samples to image with uh, afm now um, moving on to some of my results uh, so this is skimmed milk powder. I scan for nine different samples at uh, 0, 20, uh, 0, 11 to 85. Right now I'm showing four different results uh, where the major changes on the microstructure on the surface of uh, the sample is seen. So right now this is a relative humidity of skin milk at 0, 33, 43 and 85. You can see clearly that at uh, lower moisture content where there is less uh, moisture absorption on the surface, skim milk powder appeared smooth uh, as compared to uh, the, um, the region where there is higher uh, moisture absorption on the surface. Now, I wanted to mention here that SMP or skin milk powder has higher lactose content in it. Now, lactose remains in amorphous form if uh, kept at a lower temperature and lower water activity uh, lower water uh, activity but as the moisture content increases the amorphous form of lactose starts to change to crystalline structure where you can uh, clearly see there is a small nucleation or small peak development on the surface of skim milk powder and you can see there is a kind of uh, not very uniform but everywhere lactose small peaks on the surface of sk skim milk powder at relative humidity 43 as we have increased further uh, you can see that smp 85 skin milk powder 85 there is lactose uh, crystallization stacking on the surface and further uh, they are um, i mean they're on the surface now uh, the red line on skin milk powder 43 and the blue line uh, on the 3D uh, topography on uh, SMP43, I'm trying to show their orthographic projection on the whole uh, uh, whole image and one single lactose crystal. So this is uh, skin milk powder at a relative humidity 43. You can see the brain-like structure or the waviness on the surface of skin milk powder, where one small lactose crystals was a crystal was approximately uh, 160 nanometers and one micron in size. Now, with increase uh, in the moisture absorption, you can see uh, there is less waviness because there is a uniform higher crystal structures of lactose everywhere, where uh, the lactose single crystal has increased to a size of four uh, micron. Now, I also try to show the height distribution on the surface of skin milk powder just before the lactose crystallization has started and at the moment when lactose crystallization happened. Now, uh, the blue curve here uh, represents the skim milk powder at relative humidity 33, while the red curve shows a broader 
peak uh, or the distribution of uh, uh, peaks on, on the surface. You can see there was less peaks on the surface. That's why we have narrow uh, uh, peak or narrow distribution of, uh, of height, while we have broader distribution uh, at when, when the lactose crystallization had, had uh, happened already. While comparing the result of skin milk powder at relative humidity zero versus uh, skin milk powder relative humidity 85, you can again see the narrow uh, height distribution versus uh, the height distribution at relative humidity 85 showing uh, different or you know a higher amount of lactose crystals and their mountains. Showing, uh, I did the same thing with milk protein concentrate. You can immediately uh, see the difference it, uh, the milk protein concentrate surfaces appears smooth. Now, uh, I quickly mention again that milk protein concentrate has lower amount of milk sugar, that is lactose, and uh, there is higher amount of casein protein concentration leading. Now, they both try to compete for the water, uh, for water molecules, and uh, as there is higher protein content, uh, there is changes on the surface due to chemical orientation or different orientation of protein surfaces. Again, there is uh, dimple-like features on the surface which started to appear as the function of moisture absorption. As the moisture content increased, uh, the dimples on the surface started to appear. Also uh, in MPC 85, again, you can see there is uh, formation or uh, formation on the surface of lactose. Now, again, uh, I quickly wanted to show uh, mention that um, milk protein concentrate has a different, you know, couple of layers of casein network on the surface. There is a, a primary layer at the top, and there will be very dense casein structure at the bottom, and uh, they are one of the issues behind the rehydration. Uh, they try to uh, stick together. So uh, showing again their orthographic projection, you can see uh, the dimples uh, on, on, on the surface of milk protein concentrate started to appear uh, with uh, increased moisture content on the surface. And again, they started to swell with partial rehydration at uh, moisture content of 85. You can see as there was less lactose and that was in the subsurface of uh, this, these particles, there is no major lactose crystallization happened on the surface. That's why we have uh, almost similar and narrow height distribution just before uh, the moisture uh, for lactose crystallization required and after that. Again, uh, we, uh, you can uh, clearly see in the plots uh, in the height distribution when I'm comparing the results of MPC 0 and 85 that uh, there is a uh, higher uh, distrib you know, height distribution uh, is changed. And again, I wanted to mention that this is because the protein uh, surface, uh, the protein on the surface has changed uh, rather than uh, lactose because it's in subsurface. Uh, comparing this result again with uh, WPI, that is whey protein isolate, I'm showing four um, um, relative humidities. And, um, and you can see it's more smooth as compared to uh, skim milk uh, as, the, uh, as compared to the previous results. It appears more smooth. There is more fragments on the surface of these uh, powder particles. There is, um, I am not sure as AFM is not for uh, chemical composition analysis, I'm not sure uh, what are these small peaks. Uh, probably it's um, whey protein orientation, um, but I'm not sure at the moment. But you can see it's completely different from MPC and SMP. Uh, we have more uh, fragments attached on the surface of, of these powder particles, but still they are uh, smooth as compared to other. Now uh, they are, um, they, they, be, they become more um, smooth as there is higher protein content in whey protein. It's around 90% uh, in, in the powder which I used and there are fragments uh, everywhere. Now the orthographic projection of this uh, region here is uh, this one, it had a height of approximately uh, 40 to 60 nanometers. And currently I'm not sure what they are. Now, whey protein isolates, again, they have almost negligible lactose content in it. Uh, and uh, you can clearly see that the height distribution uh, doesn't change much either before the lactose crystallization water uh, required, I mean, water required before uh, and after the, um, 
the water which is required for lactose crystallization before that and after there is no major height distribution changes as there is no uh, peaks of lactose. So uh, this was uh, the uh, study which I did. Now, um, just to be, uh, you know, uh, to know about the chemical composition of uh, um, these powders, me and Sini, we are trying to uh, do some, uh, you know, experiments in Oak Ridge and probably in the coming months, we'll be going there for studying the chemical uh, composition on of the surface along with the AFM techniques. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sini and Vina. They were two very interesting presentations. I'll open the talks for discussion in a moment. Um, but just to say, as it's the last talk of the season, um, thank you to everybody who's attended, first of all, who's presented over the last couple of months, and in particular today's presenters. And thank you also to everybody who's been coming along on a regular basis. And today, very pleased to have welcomed external people attending from a number of your partner institutions. Yeah. yeah. I won't try to mention all of them because I'll probably uh, miss out some of them. I, you know, we're very pleased we've been able to get attendance from your partners for the presentation. Um, Tomas, I don't know if I want to hand over to you to have questions. Uh, uh, can I, can I, uh, yeah, can I, uh, can I personally uh, thank all the, uh, all the, all the external uh, partners, um, in particular, Dr. Peng from uh, Surrey University. Uh, we, we are collaborating for some time and hopefully we will be uh, in, in, in closer touch soon. Uh, I believe uh, the two professors from Beijing, University of Science and Technology, Professor, Professor uh, Li and Professor Wei, um, and Ilya Ivanov, I, I really appreciate because uh, at Tennessee is still very, very early, but, but he, uh, he joined us. Uh, and uh, also uh, uh, Valeria from, from Northern uh, Ireland because she's, she's very close with our, 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 our project. So that's, that's my uh, personal uh, thank. I, I, I hope I didn't miss uh, anyone, uh, but uh, I, I really appreciate that we can, we, we can join together under this platform. So I guess the two presentations are open for questions now. Um, okay, uh, Tomak, uh, can I ask you something? So, um, you uh, in in the presentation um, uh, there was this uh, portable ATR. I, I guess that is all done in Tyndall. Hello, Sini, Do you want to comment this? I I will. Yeah, actually, he caused down that, so I didn't answer for that. Yes, uh, KK, this is actually we are doing it in our lab, and we have currently we have this setup, and now we are trying to uh, replace the uh, zinc selenide uh, crystals with the diamond crystal. As I said, we have the single crystalline diamond now. We are now in a like we are almost uh, across the first stage. We are now trying to after this. Actually, we were planning to do the experiments for the analysis of milk proteins. But by the time this lockdown is announced and we couldn't continue it. It is in our lab, we are doing it. And, and you put uh, the, uh, you're planning to put this in a flow. So the, the milk proteins are supposed to plan in a flow and uh, the total internal reflections are happening be beneath the flow. It's not so, in the um, flow, it is in the crystal, it is happening. Uh, the uh, total internal reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but your your milk proteins are in a flow. Yes, it is basically. And um, uh, do you do you find any uh, significant improvement with your own single diamond ATR consider considerably uh, uh, compared uh, that's to? That's why we are still now in a calibration uh, mode because so uh, as I said, we were trying to do some experiments. We got some results, but it's not very great. So we have to do some. We have to do some changes and all. 
the the plots that you show that is actually this the from the portable system is it yeah the, uh, that is actually from the sing selenite portable uh, uh, system okay not from yeah. the diamond portable okay thanks thank you so if i can add the small comment the the the, the problem with sing selenite is uh, that it might uh, create a, a poisonous uh, salts when it is in the contact with the organic acids so that's yeah so that's 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 the main problem so that's why uh, and the, that was that was one of the one of the uh, foundation of the of the, our collaboration with Chegask that we are providing diamond materials which are very very chemically stable yeah do you have a limit of detection associated with your setup um like like the like the ATR setup do you have a, a, a limit of detection uh, in the flow say uh, you, you're asking about how, how, how the concentration of these samples or yeah 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 like what was the minimum concentration that you could actually find um i think um, we were doing it at uh, 10 milligram per ml also so we were able to detect that but it's not very uh, it it is showing that peaks absorption uh, but i think it is for about 50 milligram per ml you will get better uh, very very good spectra okay okay so it's, it would be 10 uh, that you can uh, barely distinguish okay yeah. thanks thank you Okay. Let's see if there are any if, any if there are no further questions. Um, Tom, I, did you want to try to sh share your three D image again? Um, okay. image? I'll 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 try. Can you see this? Yes. Okay. So I just I just repeat what 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 uh, we are seeing here. Uh, so there is a combination of the white light standard microscope. Uh, image so you can see the uh, milk powder particles and the, the the red fluorescence goes from the nano diamonds which were implemented during the uh, drying uh, process so uh, in this sense uh, so that's 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 the part of the uh, idea especially connected with the with the uh, uh, university of uh, ulster that they can do the real real time uh, confocal uh, high resolution or super resolution spectroscopy during the uh, drying uh, process of the powder. Sorry, sorry, rehydration process of the of the of the powder. Because uh, at the moment we have this uh, powder particle suspended in the uh, oil, so they are not. Uh, rehydrating, so you can see the steady state uh, image. But uh, the, the the next step is to do uh, this kind of uh, high resolution confocal uh, microscopy during the rehydration uh, process. Thomas, do you know exactly where the nanodiamonds are inside the? Um milk powders i mean are they inside are included in the casings uh, structure um, is so uh, uh, from from uh, our assessment uh, there are uh, quite randomly spread or equally spread in the uh, inside the the, the, the particle Okay, can it be in the vacuum? So you think it's more in the structure? Sorry, say it again. Could it be, I mean, well, milk powders normally have vacuoles inside. So can it be there inside the, the vacuoles or inside the protein uh, structures or lactose? Uh, um, I think I think it's, uh, it's, it's very open question. It's very open okay. question because uh, 
from from what we see on these uh, images, but that's still uh, macro scale. Mm -hmm. uh, from 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 the from the uh, yeah uh, atomic point of view, we cannot we cannot assess at the moment. So that's 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 why I believe if. If, if you will be successful with a super super resolution spectroscopy, we might have a, a bit more uh, information. I really hope so. <laughs> and we also we also have a number of powders done by uh, vacuum drying at the UCC partners with 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 the, with the implementation of both nano diamonds and nano uh, particles. Uh, but actually. Uh, during the, 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 the when, when, when we were about the finishing this project that uh, shutdown started and we are kind of suspended at the moment. Yeah, it's a pity. So I believe I believe we will have we will have access to the UCC uh, lab uh, soon to, to 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 restart this. Okay. I presume if there's no further questions, then to thank the two speakers and Tomek again very much for another very interesting presentation. I say to really thank everybody else who presented and all those who came at different times. Um, and look forward to restarting this series in September, when hopefully we'll be able to present some results as well, fresh from our laboratories. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you, everybody. And thank you, Tomek and Sini and Vinay today. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks very much. Thank